So here is a higher power of our, our my white blood cells <laughs> uh, or leukocytes. So beautiful. These are neutrophils. In the adults, they are the most common leukocyte. Uh, they have what I call baby girl pink granules, mm. and they're more subtle usually than your eosinophils and your base cells. So that's this background, the, this little fine granules here in the cytoplasm? Right, yes. And, and what power are we on here? Like what magnification? Is this under oil? This is under oil. This is at 1,000x. 1,000x. So that's why you can't, like when I see these on um, under my microscope, I don't have an oil lens. I look on a 40x. And e to me, white blood cells look a little pink, but you definitely can't see those granules. I can, at least my eyes can't. Or, and it's different in tissue, H&E uh -huh. uh, &E sections. Oh, good point. it is on uh, peripheral films. Um, first of all, H&E sections are hematoxylin and eosin. And this is right stain. Right stain, okay. So they look a little bit different. They look similar, but you'll notice if you go from bone marrow aspirates to your bone marrow biopsies, looking at the right to the H&E, you'll see some difference. The color difference. Okay, in cool. The morphology. Uh, and they generally have, the neutrophils have three to five segments. Okay. If you have neutrophils that have... Uh, five segments in greater than 5% of your neutrophils or neutrophils that have more than five segments, those are considered to be hypersegmented. Hypersegmented. Neutrophils with less than three are considered to be hyposegmented. Okay. But seeing five in just one cell doesn't necessarily mean there's some problem, right? No. It's only if it's uh, more than 5%, you said, of the total. Right. Okay. And keep in mind, if you look at cytospin slides, that rule goes out the window because cytospin can artificially ah. give you segmentation. So this is a small mature lymphocyte. The nucleus is about the size of a red blood cell. You have a thin rim of blue cytoplasm. And in adults, it is the second most common leukocyte. In newborn children, it is the most common hmm. leukocyte. I didn't know that. And it switches somewhere in the aging process. This big guy is a monocyte. It has more of a blue-gray cytoplasm. The nucleus can be variably shaped. Sometimes you'll have a nucleus that looks very much band-shaped. And your text will have a lot of problems with that. So make sure you look at your cytoplasm. It can be very, very helpful. And a band, is that an immature or a, a left-shifted neutrophil or no? Yes and no. Um, <laughs> it's always so, more complicated than I think. <laughs> so the technical term for neutrophil that we see here is segmented neutrophil. Okay. The technical term for band is band neutrophil. Okay. So bands are technically also neutrophils. So it is true that if you have increased bands, so quote-unquote bandemia, that that can be considered to be a left shift. But okay. if you have a few bands here and there, that's, that's fine, totally huh? fine. When you get back a little bit more immature into the metamyelocytes, I'm, if I see even one meta, I'm going to say either rare left shifted grands are present or say like mild okay. left shifted granulocytes. But the point is a band, band neutrophil can look a lot like a monocyte, right? That's right. Okay. And so the main difference between a band neutrophil and a segmented neutrophil is that it, it basically is smooth all the way through. There are no segments. Oh, okay. And then monocytes often will have vacuoles mm. in the cytoplasm, and that can be a real help, in, especially if you have a reactive appearing lymphocyte, which I'll show you later, versus a monocyte. So reactive lymphocytes can sometimes have vacuoles, but most of the time the vacuoles are very reassuring that you know you're looking at your monocyte. Okay. But the chromatin pattern is how eventually you train your eyes to determine whether it's a reactive lymphocyte or a monocyte. Eosinophils are my favorite. They're mm -hmm. probably the easiest to identify. They have very chunky hot pink granules. Um, am I allowed to say that I call them Barbie pink or is that trademarked? You, I think you can say. Okay. I, think you can say I call pink. them Barbie pink because if you, I'm going to age myself now. Back when I played with Barbies, everything Barbie owned was like this color pink. Her car, her house, her dresses. And now Barbie is, is branching out a little uh -huh. bit more. But I call this one baby girl pink, that you know, soft pink, uh -huh. and this Barbie pink. So the color's a little different, and the granules here are bigger and chunkier they're than chunkier, in, than and in they're even refractile if you're looking under light microscopy. Yeah, on on H and E, I find that really helpful because I feel like the color of neutrophils 
and um, EOs can be somewhat similar on H&E, at least from low power. And I feel that oftentimes my residents will say, oh, I think they're EOs. And it's just uh, neutrophils, like in, in a derm path biopsy. But I find that if I flip my condenser, I can get that refractile look. And you can really see the granules on the EO. But again, I can't on 40X see them on the neutrophil. And I find that actually helpful in practice in tissue sections to tell them apart. And then this guy here is a basophil. Now, I find basophils to be the most morphologically variable of all the uh, white blood cells circulating. Because if you look at a basophil cross-eyed, it will degranulate. <laughs> which is kind of what this one has done. Most of this is degranulated. And I'll show you one later uh, that's not, but you can still see that chunky uh, purple granular. These are the least common uh, white blood cell. And in fact, is the only basophil on my entire peripheral blood wow. smear, which is why that is the example and not a better granulated. You one. have low basophil count. I think it must be something something serious. I'm just joking. Yeah. The what you know what I did, I've always wondered why don't we see basophils in tissue sections? Like I've never recognized the basophil in skin or anywhere else. Are they there and they just don't look like, or do they only stay in the blood and never get out into the tissue? Is there I, any? I don't know. I've always wondered why is this thing that's in our blood never show up, or at least I can never see it. I well, they're so rare even in the blood. Okay. Um, I don't think you're really going to, to pick them up. They may not stain well on H&E. I oh, don't okay. know because I've never actually really looked for them all that yeah. much. They're not prominent in the bone marrow either. Okay. Um, and then some people consider basophils and mast cells to be kind of cousins. That's what I wondered if they are like mast cells, but we see lots of mast cells in the skin, way more than you would see in the blood. So. Right. Um, some people don't consider them to be related. Uh. It's, it's sort of up in the air. I, they're not the same cell. Okay. They're they are the, different cells. They are de different cells. They look pretty similar. They have that clumpy uh, purple granules. Mm -hmm. uh, basophils should have this sort of bilobed appearance okay. to them. Yeah. So you can see there's two And mast here. cells don't have that. And mast cells, normal mast cells, should have a centrally placed mm -hmm. nucleus that you can barely see because it has so many granules. Okay. That's cool. That's good to know. Uh, I, The only time I really see basos probably is in CML. Okay. And this is a picture to highlight the red blood cells. So the red blood cell in three dimensions is a biconcave disc, which basically means that it comes together in the middle. So it's fatter on the outside and thinner on the inside, okay. which makes it look like a donut. Yeah. On the peripheral mm, blood film. Donuts. So there you go. You now have your first pathology food analogy for this session. And it should be about a third. So if you have an increased, um, you know, pallor, that would be sort of your likely, should I look for iron deficiency? Okay. Or so the, 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 the clear the clear part in the middle, you're saying, should be about a third of the space across the whole red cell? Right. Okay. And that clear part's not really a hole, right? It's it's really connected. It's just that the section we're seeing, it looks like a right. empty yeah, space? It's, okay. It's not really an empty space. There, I mean, the red cell... It's just cell, a dip, right? It's, it's a dip. Okay. Yes. It's important to have that so your your red blood cell can fit through like all the capillaries ah, and the gold and stuff. Cool. And there are platelets that you can actually see. Uh, there nice. is a little bitty platelet aggregate there and, you know, individual platelets here. Little bitty aggregates like this, if they're few and far between, I don't really mention. Okay. Because it's not really going to affect the platelet count. But larger ones will, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. But now you can see them. They're granular. And they, if you look at the megakaryocytes, it looks like megakaryocyte granules. Okay. And in the bigger megakaryocyte, I feel like those granules sort of look like the texture of a furry purple Muppet. <laughs> uh, and it's so your platelet should look a little bit furry. Okay.